I love this part of the, the property. These flowers and the willows that we have back here. It's just a really cool feel back here. It is sun blowing through right now too. It's, it's just beautiful, beautiful back here. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite. Hmm. Yep, so that's the corkscrew yes. willow, Lana. I like it. That's awesome. Okay. Oh, it's weeping. It, it is kind of like a weeping willow. How the... yeah. So these were just some little snippets that I used in a... They were like this. Yeah, I used it in a floral arranging class for like a spring one like five years ago, was that? Or six? Maybe six years ago, huh? Probably six. Yeah. And they rooted and then we rooted them into pots and now here They're they like are. full on trees under there. Yeah, we've got two, two That's like this. Cool. Yeah, that is I so gorgeous. <laughs> you want to <laughs> climb that, huh, Lana? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those are cool. So tall. And the waterway got dug the way it should because of that broken tile. So now water can flow through here really nice. It'd be really nice. These are just all so gorgeous. I just really wish that the camera could really capture it like as beautiful as all of this is. In this area of wildflowers, we did not do a mix. I am not a huge fan of wildflower mixes. Anytime we've used a mix that was pre-mixed, we end up having a lot of just two things left over the second or third year that ends up taking over everything and then ends up being in like just light yellow or light orange and if you know me at all i love multi-color but mainly like purples and oranges and pinks and so if i'm left over with yellows and light unsaturated oranges that is not going to do it for me so this was a mixture that we just created on our own we prepped this area three years ago and just started throwing seeds down that really inspired me uh, with the color palette and they come and blossom at different times. So there's more to come and blossom, a lot more yellows and blues that will be coming in soon. But yeah, everything's just a cycle and then we get to make beautiful bouquets. But most of these really just sit here and they are a great home to the butterflies and bees, all other pollinators. And it's just really, really beautiful because we have a lot of patches of milkweed around the property that the butterflies absolutely love. Uh, lots of dill patches for those black swallowtails this time of year. Um, so we just uh, really try to create a nice little paradise for them in all these random patches on the property. I'm more of a wild yard rather than a tame managed lawn, even though we have those areas too because it is nice to be able to play in with the kids. But majority, uh, we've been really working hard this past 10 years on our property to really kind of transform it into being a home for everything natural. So um, it's, it's always a process, but you know, we're getting there. What are you doing, Sayla? It's the remake of the Mario Don't go in! <laughs> it's the remake of the Mario Brothers movie. Yeah, Mario yeah. Brothers. You going through, Sayla? I wouldn't. There might be a lot of spiders in there. Go away, stop it. <laughs> take it easy, take it easy. <laughs> this year there's a lot of transformations happening on the property. What did you throw in there? <laughs> yep, that there are. This over here is another really cool berm. We did, there's just a lot of, lot of clover and just
grass and then we just kind of let the grass uh, go ahead and seed out and it's so gorgeous. It's just really beautiful. <laughs> And then it's manicured next to it, which is nice. But you know, you get your wild little patches. I like the, uh, I know the yellow are weeds, but. Yeah. And then look at there's even a couple little. You get the wild white daisy, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you do not want to smell this daisy. I'm sure plenty of you have these in your yard and they smell not too good. <laughs> not good. <laughs> smell and not good. I love all the blues and the purples so pretty. I love these here. Well this is the leftover wood from our project that we're almost completed with in the garden oasis but as you can tell this garden we haven't really cleaned up yet for this year. It looks like Jason's grabbing some of the weeds but it's really hard to get to all the gardens right away in the season so you know what we just do what we can that's all you can do, right Jason? Yeah, do what you can when you can. Yes. Sometimes you just don't think about a lot of these things until you see it. Oh, we're all of a sudden walking by and oh yeah, this needs to get done. Yeah, but I'm done for today, so no yeah. more weeds for me. No, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're done for today. <laughs> what do you got? A moth. It's an insect for your information. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the leftover wood from our project that we're almost completed with in the garden oasis. But as you can tell, this garden we haven't really cleaned up yet for this year. It looks like Jason's grabbing some of the weeds, but it's really hard to get to all the gardens right away in the season. So you know what? We just do what we can. That's all you can do. Right, Jason? Yeah. Do what you can when you can. Yes. Sometimes you just don't think about a lot of these things until you see it. Oh, we're all of a sudden walking by and oh yeah, this needs to get done. Yeah, but I'm done for today, so no yeah. more weeds for me. No. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're done for today. <laughs> and here's the front yard garden. Just returning. Some beautiful spring bloomers in the front here. Cat's pajamas. And paint the town magenta dianthus coming here. I always love the mixture with the hoogras because they have color no matter what time of year it is. I'm going to add more hoogras into a lot of my garden designs the next time. <laughs> and then we do have our window boxes planted for the season. So this year I did do them a little bit different. So they do get tall, but we don't have a lot trailing super duper long because you don't end up seeing it anyway because this entire garden gets so huge. Right here, just returning, is the hibiscus. It's a summerific evening rose. Gets so huge and fills in this whole area. These grasses get tall. And then another summerific fills in this whole area. So you don't see anything trailing right behind. And it kind of made it difficult to walk back behind the garden. So everything will kind of trail over to about here in the box but not to the ground which is totally fine but they go up so we kind of created the uh, window boxes instead of just being their own thing they're an extension of the garden so it'll be almost like another top layer of the garden so i think it'll be pretty cool hi fuzzy how's it going good the cat's pajamas Paint the Town Magenta Dianthus. I know that everyone will be asking about this because it is hot pink and just gorgeous. And the tulips, hyacinths, and daffodils are all done for the season. So a lot of people tear theirs out. I'm just gonna cut off the dead tops and just plant around them. Um, will they come back next year really well? I guess we'll have to see and I'll keep you updated. <laughs> I'm over digging. <laughs> Look how pretty that view is of the garden right here. That's gorgeous. So I have pots up here that I have not planted yet. And as you can see, I don't have any of my uh, planters planted up here yet. And honestly, I don't really know if I'm going to plant those up or not, you know? Yeah, it's just a couple more things to water. And we've already got all this out here. And Yeah, look at how beautiful that side of the garden is. And this side of the garden is. And as they get huge, it's like... The window box over on this corner ends up filling out so much that, you know, I know it is bare. I mean, we'll still add like a rug or whatever, but it is a lot to maintain, you guys, like everything that we do. And the backyard has so many containers and so many things and boxes and gardens and 
Um, so, you know, you just, you gotta decide what's the most important to have. And honestly, we're not by our front door hanging out all the time. So right. we're not front yeah. porch people, right, Jay? That's right. <laughs> I think somebody stole one of our stones here. Oh, for sure. It looks like there's, there's one missing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't us trying to like? <laughs> we needed it for somewhere else. To we hold had the we needed down. one more stone to finish that new project in back, so I just <laughs> ran up here and grabbed it. And <laughs> that's how we roll around. That's how here. we roll. Yeah, yep. Back to the fuchsia mm -hmm. salvia up here in front. Look at how gorgeous those are. They blossom now, and then we cut them down. But then other things come into blossom, like our uh, Russian sage right here. It gets light blue and beautiful. Um, and then over here, we've got more of the Dianthus, paint the town fuchsia, or magenta, sorry. Ooh, we got a big pricker here, hon. We gotta yeah. get a shovel for that one. Shovel and glove, like gloves for roses. But yeah, just so pretty. I love seeing someone in the garden when I'm filming because then it shows you, like, the size okay. of the garden, you, you know? Oh, it's okay. I see you in it. Because <laughs> fuzzy, you can see fuzzy, but it's nice to see a full-grown person in there. <laughs> and the grasses are just now returning here and here, these three. And then there are some yuccas that are just starting to kind of, um, they hold their form and color through the winter, but they'll get even taller um, real soon here. You can see one there and one there so that always adds like a really pretty texture and color in the garden all right so i'm passing our wygelia look how gorgeous this is so beautiful look at those absolutely gorgeous wine and roses but i'm taking you over here because i'm gonna give you guys just a quick little sneak peek of the project that we've been working on this year and it's really exciting and it's something that will help us enjoy the garden even more so even throughout the day. So I'll let you guys see a little quick sneak peek. We finally have shade and because of this project I'm a little behind on planting my raised beds but boy is it worth it. So Jason, you loving it? Oh, I'm definitely loving it. It's, it's <laughs> so nice to, uh, we've been sitting in here while it's been under construction ever since the deck got built and the roof got put on where we had shade. So yeah, uh, it's, it's been really nice to, to have some shade. And now that it's all done, it feels amazing in here. We just have the roof that's going on. Yeah. So there's a steel roof that's going on and it just, it's, on order so once that comes in we'll have a real dark uh, midnight gray steel roof when it does rain it hasn't rained here in a while and it's not supposed to but when it does rain it will be protected yep and then we'll be able to get the house painted too just at least on this side for this year we've been in our home for 10 years and we use the same color everywhere so you can see how much the house has faded in 10 years because the color in here which is not black it's actually like a really dark charcoal that we created it's a custom color we created and um we're gonna touch all that up so everything just matches and feels freshened up and really good <laughs> look at you pondering <laughs> So where Jason is, is where our outdoor couch will go. So that's a nice little plant shelf. Also <sighs> an area, <laughs> also an area to, you know, put your uh, beverage if you're drinking while you're sitting on the couch. And then, um, yeah, we'll share this with you guys more once we get things finalized here. Stop back for updates. 